This is the travel tale of two sisters on an impromptu trip to Glacier National Park in Montana. Having never been to the Treasure State prior, it's safe to say we were already wowed just from the descent into Kalispell. We booked lodging at the Country Inn and Suites right on the airport property. And while it was nice, we didn't spend much time there. We had other priorities. After a few delicious brews, we made our way to the Raven for sunset over Flathead Lake, thanks to a friendly tip from a Sunrift bartender. We awoke before the sun the next morning for our first look at Glacier with an early sunrise over Lake McDonald. Wildlife is abundant within the park, so when driving, stay alert. Our visit took place during the first week of October, so the fall foliage was starting to peak. Our first hike was on John's Lake Trail. The trail was mellow and quiet, a little too quiet, so we turned back. We couldn't shake the feeling that there might be a bear just around each bend. We still had a lovely view of the lake and then made our way to McDonald Falls. It was the perfect spot for a picnic, and once we were done with our lunch and a little bit of yoga, the sun decided to come out. Next, it was time to continue exploring the park by traveling along one of the most scenic drives in America, the Going to the Sun Road. This drive will take your breath away. We felt that fall was the perfect time to visit because the summer crowds were gone and the colors were vibrant. You definitely don't want to rush this drive because if you're like us, you'll want to stop every few hundred feet to take in the views and take some pictures. But for your safety, be sure to use the pullouts or have your passenger do all of the filming. There are countless places to stop along the going to the sun road. Get out, stretch your legs, and go for a hike. With over 700 miles of trails within the park, there is certainly no shortage of paths to explore. It seriously took us several hours to go just a few miles, but with beauty like this, it was impossible to just drive past. Eventually, we reached the trailhead to St. Mary Falls. You'll notice part of this area is still recovering from the Reynolds Creek Fire of 2015. In just under a mile, you'll reach the beautiful St. Mary Falls. But do not, I repeat, do not stop here. Just a little further on the trail, you will come to what was probably my favorite spot in all of Glacier. Continue on the trail for again about a mile and you will come to the spectacular Virginia Falls. Then enjoy the beauty yet again as you make your way back to the trailhead. Taking a quick peek over St. Mary Lake was our turnaround point for our first full day in Glacier National Park. 
from there, we started the long and scenic drive back to our hotel, catching a magnificent sunset along the way. Our final experience for the day was driving through a leaf shower. If this doesn't scream fall, I don't know what does. The only thing missing was a spiced chai tea latte. Our next day started in the town of Whitefish, where we ate and drank our way down East 2nd Street before going to check out Whitefish Lake. Next up was whiskey tasting at Glacier Distilling Company. We can highly recommend their bear-proof huckleberry whiskey, but please note, this whiskey doesn't actually make you bear-proof. We made our way back into the park for another afternoon of exploring, stopping at some of the same places we had just seen the day before. So beautiful. On today's hiking agenda, the Hidden Lake Overlook Trail. A relatively easy 1.3 mile hike brings you to the scenic overlook, and we can vouch, it's the perfect place to catch the sunset. It was pretty chilly that evening. So thank goodness we were dressed in layers and had our huckleberry whiskey to warm us up. The only thing about catching sunset at Hidden Lake is that it starts to get dark as you make your way back to your car. So be sure to pack a flashlight or a headlamp. and always be mindful of wildlife when driving at dawn, dusk, or nighttime. For our final day in the park, we walked the Trail of the Cedars, an accessible trail that connects with Avalanche Trail, leading to Avalanche Lake. These cedar trees are four to seven feet in diameter and grow to heights of 100 feet. Several of the trees in this area are estimated to be over 500 years old. At the intersection of the Trail of Cedars and Avalanche Trail, you'll be in awe by the power of glacially melted water as it cascades through a narrow gorge. Continue on the trail for about a mile and a half until you are greeted with panoramic views of Avalanche Lake. While many visitors to the lake simply rest here and then head back to the trailhead, we'd encourage you to continue on the trail that goes around the lake. Views from the other side are just as scenic. And for us, it killed enough time for the clouds to part and the sun to come out. Our final day in Montana was spent exploring the town of Big Fork, and while it didn't present the grandeur of Glacier, it was a charming place to spend a few hours before heading to the airport. Montana is a destination where you can't just visit once. There's still so much of Glacier that we haven't yet discovered. The beauty of Big Sky Country has stayed with us long after our visit. And all that means is, well, I guess we'll have to go back. <laughs>